This is Top Accolade Global News Update. I am Abiodun Mohamed. German and Italian police have arrested more than 100 people on Wednesday in a crackdown on the Italian Drangheta organized crime group. German public prosecutors and police in the two countries said the suspects are accused of money laundering, criminal tax evasion, fraud and the smuggling of drugs, mafia-type criminal association and the possession and trafficking of weapons. The arrests were part of a coordinated investigation by Germany, Belgium, France, Italy, Portugal and Spain. German authorities said the Indrageta, which has its root in the southern region of Calabria, the two of Italy's boot, has surpassed Cosa Nostra as the most powerful mafia group in the country and one of the largest criminal networks in the world. Italy's Carabinieri police carried out 108 arrests across the country in an investigation based in the southern city of Reggio Calabria. They said in a statement, a further 15 people were detained on the orders of police in the northwestern port of Genoa. German police also arrested dozens of suspects in early morning raids. In Belgium, police raided more than 20 addresses, prosecutors said, adding they would provide more details at a news conference later in the morning. State police in Bavaria said the arrests were the result of more than three years of an investigation dubbed Operation Eureka. They said Italian and Belgian investigators believed that the crime group smuggled close to 25 tons of cocaine between October 2019 and January 2022 and funneled more than 22 million euros from Calabria to Belgium, the Netherlands and South America. Israeli forces and Palestinian armed groups in Gaza have agreed to a ceasefire after a night of Israeli airstrikes that pounded the besieged coastal enclave while rockets were launched towards Israel following the death in prison of prominent Palestinian hunger striker Kada Adnan. The reciprocal and simultaneous ceasefire went into effect at 3.30 a.m. and was brought about with effort from Egyptian, Qatari and United Nations officials. Two sources told pressmen on Wednesday, Islamic Jihad spokesman Tariq Selmi said fighting had ended by dawn on Wednesday. Hamas had engaged in talks with Egyptian, Qatari and UN officials to end Israeli aggression on Gaza, the group said in a statement earlier on Wednesday. Hamas said its leader, Ismail Aniye, held talks with officials from both countries and the UN to end Israel's attacks, which saw Israeli fighter jets and tanks attack targets in Gaza late on Tuesday and Palestinian fighters fire rockets into Israel following the death of Adnan after he spent its seven days on hunger strike in an Israeli jail. The Palestinian source told newsmen that the ceasefire was the result of several parties entering talks to prevent Israel's attack on Gaza from escalating. Hamas also praised the performance of the Palestinian armed groups that had jointly responded to Adnan's death. A fuel depot was on fire early on Wednesday near a crucial bridge linking Russia's mainland with Crimea, a Russian official said, days after Moscow blamed Ukraine for an attack that set fire to an oil depot in Sevastopol. Flames and black smoke billowed over what appeared to be like tanks emblazoned with red warnings of flammable in videos posted on Russian social media, though pressmen could not independently verify either the fire reports or the videos. In quote, the fire has been classified as the highest rank of difficulty. Benjamin Kondratiev, the governor of the Krasnodar region lying across the Sea of Azov from Ukraine said on the Telegram messaging app, adding that there were no casualties. Kondratiev said the blaze broke out in the village of Volna. The hamlet is close to the Crimean Bridge over the Kerch Strait, a major artery for Russian forces as it links the mainland to the Crimean Peninsula that was annexed in 2014 from Ukraine. The incident came days after a drone strike set ablaze a Russian food storage facility in the Crimean port of Sevastopol on Saturday in what Moscow called a Ukrainian attack. Ukraine did not claim responsibility for the Sevastopol attack in line with its standard practice during the conflict which began in February 2022. India, Cambodia and the Philippines are among the most dangerous places in the world for human rights and labor activists with protests against corporate abuses often met with state-backed violence, according to a new report. Brazil topped the list of the most dangerous countries with 63 recorded attacks against activists in 2022, followed by India and Mexico with 54 and 44 attacks, respectively, according to the report released on Wednesday by the UK-based Business and Human Rights Resource Center. Cambodia had 40 recorded attacks, followed by the Philippines and Honduras with 32 and 31 attacks, respectively, the report said. Belarus, Peru, 
Colombia and Uganda were the next most dangerous countries with between 17 and 28 attacks each. The Business and Human Rights Resource Center said 75% of the more than 550 attacks recorded worldwide were linked to people protecting land, climate or environmental rights and one-fifth of the attacks were against indigenous activists. Mining was the most dangerous industry linked to 165 or 30% of the attacks, while the Business and Human Rights Resource Center said it was difficult to identify the perpetrators of the attacks. It was able to link 235 incidents or 43% of cases to a multinational company or their subsidiaries. China's foreign minister has met Myanmar's top general in Naypyidaw, ailing the friendship between the two nations and pledging to boost ties as violence escalates in the Southeast Asian country two years after a military coup. King Gang's meeting with senior general Min Aung Lang on Tuesday makes the diplomat the highest ranking Chinese official to meet Myanmar's coup leader since he snatched power from the elected government in February 2021. China is a major ally and arms supplier of the internationally isolated military and has refused to condemn Min Aung Lang's takeover of the coup which deposed elected leader Aung San Suu Kyi, prompted widespread peaceful protests that security forces suppressed with deadly force. Thousands of people have been killed in the crackdown leading to armed resistance throughout the country that the military has been unable to quell. The Chinese CGTN broadcaster said Kin told Mi Ang Lang that Beijing attaches in quote great importance to its friendship with Myanmar and said the two men agreed to further promote comprehensive strategic partnership between the two countries. That is the size of Top Accolade Global News Updates. You can follow us on our social media platforms as displayed on your screen. Happy Midweek!